My dear brothers and sisters, I'd like to take you to the book of Daniel. Daniel was just about 500 years before Christ. And when he wrote his book, it was only after he died this book was written and how he describes everything that happens in his life. You know how Daniel was in the den, the lion. You know how Daniel was chosen to be among the three great men, Shadak, Nebak, and Abednego. And when the flames were burning, they were all praising God and thanking God. And God did not harm this three wonderful people because they were praising and thanking God in the furnace of fire. When Nebuchadnezzar said, I want to destroy these people who are not willing to follow my decree. And then you see how Nebuchadnezzar becomes a great friend of Daniel and he wants him to interpret all the dreams. Even the dreams of how Daniel writes on the wall with his own hand. And how he reveals these dreams to Nebuchadnezzar. Not only that, to reveal this dream of Nebuchadnezzar, Daniel also has another dream. So that through his dream, he can interpret the dream of the king. So you see, Daniel's book is one of those beautiful books. Today, we have a short passage from Daniel. That is 12th chapter verses 1, 2 and 3. But I like you if you have time for this week. Because this is the last liturgical weeks. This week and next week is the last liturgical week. And if you have time, I request you to read the entire book of Daniel. You will enjoy it. You will see how this great prophet, he's a minor prophet. But how it depicts the coming of the new kingdom. How this new kingdom will reign. He doesn't speak about Jesus Christ. But he speaks about the new kingdom. How can he speak about the new kingdom? Because he's seen the kingdom of David. He's seen the, he heard about the kingdom of David. He heard about the kingdom of Solomon. And during the exile, how the kingdom of Israel was destroyed and brought into exile. He's seen all the up and down of Israel's kingdoms. And all these kingdoms began with a king, ended with another king. And that is how these kingdoms ended. But he speaks about a kingdom that will never end. And for sure, that kingdom is what Jesus speaks about in today's gospel reading. Therefore, he says, do not worry. Even if the sun comes down, even if the stars strike down, even if the heavens come down, you are going to be the one who is going to be saved and therefore the chosen ones will be taken up to heaven, to that kingdom of God. So you are all privileged people, be sure about that. Heavenly Father has chosen you as his treasure, not just as a follower, as a treasure. Therefore, he is not going to throw away this treasure and say, you are useless or you are not fit for my kingdom. He is going to come and pick you up and say that you are my chosen one. Therefore, Daniel is one great prophet who speaks about that kingdom which lasts forever. So Daniel in a way is an apocalyptic writer. So when we speak about apocalyptic writer, we know the last book in the Bible. We all know the last book in the Bible. It is called Apocalypse. Book of Apocalypse or now we know it is as a book of Revelation. Now what is this apocalyptic writing? The apocalyptic writings are where it is like having a way, you know, you put your chunni right in front of your face. I can't see your face. I don't know whether you are full of makeup or full of bhutto or about lipstick or whatever. But when you take out your wing, then I realize you are so beautiful. You have 
put, put a nice makeup, you look really wonderful. But if you cover, there is nothing that is revealed. Apocalyptic is removing the veil and revealing what really God is. Therefore, Daniel writes in such a way that he wants to reveal the glory of God and therefore he removes the veil. The apocalyptic part showing that the kingdom of God is going to be forever. That is not going to end like David or Solomon's kingdoms. Therefore, you find Jesus Christ when he comes. And as soon as Jesus comes into this world, what does he do? He establishes this kingdom. So the kingdom is established. And if it is established, it is going to last forever. Now, I am chosen, you are chosen, and we are going to fit into that kingdom of God. What am I supposed to do? To live in that kingdom and to one day be in that heavenly kingdom forever, enjoying eternal life. It happened, my dear friends, somebody asked Jesus, how do we prepare for dying? How do we prepare for dying? Jesus just said, you want to prepare yourself for dying? All that you have to do is, you have to live. It is by living you prepare for death. So be sure about this part. That as long as you live in this world, live your life. And make your life more meaningful. See that your life really brings the presence of God in your family, in your friend, in the place where you work. When you talk to somebody, they should say, Hey, I can see that veil being removed from you and I can know that you belong to Jesus. That is second coming, my dear friends. The second coming is not going to happen on a particular day, on the particular time, because Jesus himself says here, I do not know. Only my heavenly father knows. When will that end come? But Jesus says, I will come again. Whenever you do something beautiful and touch people's life, that is the time you have brought Jesus into their life. Suppose if I really touch people's life and they say, Father, really you touched my life. It's not something that has happened to me, something that has happened to them. Jesus has come into their life. That is the second coming. Jesus has already come. Every time somebody receives Jesus, it is that second coming. You go all of a sudden and do some extraordinary work at home. Maybe you go and help your wife, that which you never did so many days. You suddenly go. Or you suddenly go and do something extraordinary for your husband. Or you go and do something extraordinary for your children. Or you go do something extraordinary for your parents. They'll say, my, I feel so great. It looks like Jesus is here. It happened, my dear friends, to an elderly woman where she said, seen a man who came into the house asking for some food, was feeling hungry. She immediately made him sit in the sofa, gave him breakfast, and as he was leaving, he thanked her. But suddenly she looked at his feet, and there he, she seen the shoes that he was wearing. It was totally torn, and immediately she said, please sit down. Give me one minute. She went into the room, brought eight pairs of shoes. And then she went on her knees and started putting those shoes one after the other to see which is fitting. Finally, one fitted him just exactly his size. He was unable to express the way she did that. He was just looking at her as though Jesus has come. Because she did what Jesus did on the Last Supper, went on her knees, not washed, but gave this man a shoes to wear. This is how you bring Jesus into people's life. This is the second coming that you and I should speak of. Every time when you do something nice, remember that you are unveiling Jesus to somebody. 
you will become like Daniel, unveiling the glory of God in and through every work that you do for Christ. It is not necessary that I have to become a very good person. No, do simple works. That's why I think George W. Bush, in one of the inaugurals, he just said this, we must do small things with great love. And you will bring Jesus to them. Mother Teresa was doing wonderful work. A man suddenly seen Mother Teresa doing so much of beautiful work, washing the lepers' hands and feet and giving him a bath. And this man said, I want to remain here permanently. Mother Teresa said, listen, don't live in this illusion that you are caught up with this love. Bloom where you are planted. Therefore, go to your family, go to your house, go to the place where you are and bloom for Christ. And Christ is going to come into everyone's life in and through you. Be happy, my dear friends, whenever somebody says, I see Jesus in you. That is the second coming. When you do something beautiful for somebody, they feel so happy. They are unable to express. Be happy that you have brought Jesus into their life. That is the second coming. Do not look for the second coming here or there. Jesus says, when the tree starts getting those new leaves, remember the summer is there. When I see something nice you are doing for your family, for your husband, for your wife, for your children, for the locality, for the parish maybe, then I know the kingdom has gone. Kingdom of God has come into your life. That is the reason why, my dear friends, we we have to see that Jesus comes to unveil the kingdom of God that will last forever. The kingdom of the church, and we live in this church which belongs to Him. Therefore, today. The kingdom of God is the church. The kingdom of God is your family. The kingdom of God is a believing community. Amen. Let us all stand for the creed.